Welcome back to Munchausen's Proxy, where we witness the entertainment media go full shill following the tallying of the final numbers for Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny's second full week in theaters. I know most entertainment consumers are not up on the ins and outs of how Hollywood accounting is done. After all, you have lives that don't involve helping multi-billion dollar corporations' minions do math. However, the people in the entertainment media do, or at least they should. Given the tenor of a recent spate of articles full of attempts to put lipstick on a very fat pig, you could be excused for thinking the people who write for entertainment media companies actually don't know how movies work, vis-a-vis the box office numbers and their budgets. Collider led the way with Diego Peralta writing an article titled, Quote, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny finally breaks even at the global box office, unquote. The layman reading that would conclude Indy 5 was a success. And that is what Collider want you to think. If you read through the article, most of it is a fluffy description of the movie itself and the troubles Disney and Lucasfilm have had making the movie. It's not until the very last paragraph where a more realistic view of the movie and Disney Lucasfilm emerges. Once Collider put out its attempt to cover for Kathleen Kennedy's Vanity Project, CBR felt comfortable enough to jump on that life raft. Jeremy Dick penned, quote, Indiana Jones 5 breaks even at the box office, unquote. The misleading subheading went on with, quote, After an underwhelming start at the box office, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny has now broken even with its budget, unquote. The first paragraph is an even more juicy gem. Quote, while Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny didn't quite live up to the studio expectations at the box office, the film is not a total bomb as it has now officially broken even on its exorbitant budget, unquote. CBR goes even further than Collider, trying to hint that there is some benefit to even discussing the possibility of Phoebe Waller-Bridge, the general consensus worst character in the movie, taking the reins of the Indiana Jones franchise going forward. When I saw these two articles, I had two initial thoughts. First, how much did Kathleen Kennedy, Lucasfilm, and or Disney have to pay or promise Collider and CBR to write such errant nonsense. And second, nobody who does not know how movie finances work vis-a-vis the box office and budgets should be allowed by their editors to write articles claiming a movie broke even when it clearly did not. Nearly everyone who watches the movie business knows that the break-even point is not the budget number. If it were, then movie theaters would be showing movies for free. And that is just the beginning of where Collider and CBR went wrong. Included in the break-even point is the budget, plus any marketing done for the movie, plus the share of that number that theaters will take as their cut for showing the films. Most analysts use a 60-40 ratio, with the theaters getting the 40. However, more accurate analysts have begun using the 50-50 ratio, mainly because domestic theaters are usually getting about 45% of the take and foreign theaters usually get around 55. The exception is China. The Chinese only allow movie studios about 25% of the box office take. So if your blockbuster raked in $100 million total in China, you only get $25 million. The Chinese theaters and the CCP get the remaining 75%. What does all that math mean for Collider's and CBR's contention that Indy 5 broke even? It means they are full of crap. The reported budget of Indy 5 is claimed to be a shade under $300 million. Inside sources have leaked that it is probably at least $350 million. However, Let's be conservative and use the $300 million number. Add to that a marketing budget that has been reported to be $100 million. 
but estimates have speculated it being as high as $200 million. Again, let's use the conservative number. That means the total budget is $400 million. The rule of thumb is you need two and a half times your total cost in putting a movie out to hit break even. One more time, let's be conservative and just go with the 50 50 studio theaters box office split. That means to officially break even, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny must hit a minimum of $800 million just to break even. Currently, Indy 5 is just over $303 million worldwide after 18 days in theaters. It is currently only bringing in $1.5 million per day at 3,865 theaters, which is only $393 per theater. This means Lucasfilm and Disney will be pulling it from theaters more quickly because it is not paying to keep it in them at such a low take. What does that mean in light of these two articles? It means Lucasfilm and Disney are going to lose somewhere north of $150 million on Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. And with that kind of money on the table going up in flames, you can understand why the entertainment media have been going full shill for Disney, Lucasfilm, and Kathleen Kennedy. After a year or two of close to nothing but bad news from the box office and streaming, Disney and Kathleen Kennedy needed this movie to be the box office darling of the summer. Instead, it could be used as a special effect in the upcoming Oppenheimer movie. The touch of death Kathleen Kennedy has brought to Lucasfilm has finally killed the last IP the studio has. There is nothing else for her to despoil. And that being the case, why is she still the head of Lucasfilm? And are we really getting three new Star Wars films that Disney is going to have to shell out hundreds of millions of dollars when Kathleen Kennedy's track record is pretty plain over the last few years? She has announced movie after movie and none of them have come to fruition. Bob Iger just had his contract renewed. See my video on that happy bit of news linked below. And his mandate from the board was probably to stop the hemorrhaging of cash. In light of Disney's situation, they have already announced that they are selling off networks like Freeform and FX and looking for quote-unquote partners for failing ESPN. If Kennedy still has power at Lucasfilm to do what she wants, the Ray movie will probably get made. I doubt the other two will, however. I suppose the next most likely to happen is the Dave Filoni movie, if only because it will wrap up their failing Star Wars D-plus shows. I doubt the James Mangold movie ever sees the light of day. If she has finally laid her last rotten egg as the golden girl of Lucasfilm and Disney is tired of paying for her vanity projects, I think Indy 5 might have killed all of them. She will likely continue at Lucasfilm until she dies or retires of her own record. If for no other reason than whoever her guardian angel in Hollywood is has enough juice to protect even this level of incompetence and creative bankruptcy. That is all I have for this video. I'm still slogging away on how to fix Marvel, but it is coming together. I will link the video about Bob Iger's renewed contract and the recently leaked Snow White pictures in the description. Please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Also, please like, share the video, and comment down below. It helps the channel and is much appreciated. Until next time. Tschüss.